let's talk about blood pressure and exercise. One of my favorite topics. But first, let's talk about blood pressure in general and how the body regulates it and what it's able to do. So, bring up my favorite whiteboard here. So blood pressure is a variable that we want to maintain in a similar range all the time. So blood pressure, if we want to keep it the same at all points, you don't want it too low because then blood doesn't get where it's going. You don't want it too high because that's bad for all of your blood vessels in your body and stress. Therefore, it's controlled by negative feedback. Hey, negative feedback controls everything, right? So blood pressure would be our controlled variable in negative feedback. And what we want to do then is think about all the parts of a negative feedback loop. So the next thing down will be the sensor or receptor. Once we fill that in, we're going to have a control center to take care of everything. And then we're going to have to whoop, have an effector that is going to then fix the blood pressure in some way or another. So. How is the blood pressure actually sensed? Well, what is the concept of pressure? Pressure is something that is in some way pushing against the vessels in your body. So therefore, it's gotta be some kind of mechanoreceptor, a receptor that would literally pick up the pressure in the vessels. If you're outside measuring pressure, you might be familiar with the device that does that. It's called a barometer. Barometers measure pressure. In that case, it's usually measuring the pressure of the air pushing down on a liquid, and you can see how it changes. In the body, we use the same term, but it's a slightly different kind of nerve signal, but we call it a baroreceptor. So you have baroreceptors throughout the blood vessels in your body, and they're the thing that says, well, hey, there's a lot of pressure on the vessel, or there's very little pressure on the vessel. All right, so the next is the control center. Where does that signal go? In this case, this is a major body function. It's going to be controlled by the brain. And it's a major body function that you don't really want to have to think about. Blood pressure should not be part of your daily conscious concept. So it's controlled by a part of your brain that is way further back in the hindbrain region, and specifically the medulla oblongata. In the medulla oblongata is the cardiac center, which is where the body is able to regulate all of this. All right, so now you have two options. Obviously, your blood pressure could be a little high or your blood pressure could be a little low. And it is going to do slightly different things depending. So I'm going to go ahead and add a second set of arrows so we can follow that. Let's start with blood pressure is too low. What happens if your blood pressure is too low? Well, that would mean there's not enough blood getting where it's going. So how would we get more blood to where it's going? Well, there's two different ways this can happen. One of them, of course, is to literally pump more blood. And you do that by having an increased heart rate, which I'm going to just say is HR, so it fits. The other thing you can do is actually make the pressure on the vessels go up by changing how the vessels are built. In this case, it would increase the pressure if we had a smaller space for things to go in. So your body could also use a process called vasoconstriction, which fairly literally will decrease the size of the blood vessel. So we talk about blood pressure being controlled by two things, cardiac output, which is how fast the heart rate is going, and peripheral resistance, which is how much space there is around it to think about how it goes. So if you think about this as a hose, a larger hose that has less pressure, a smaller hose has more pressure. So what about the other way? So that's low. If blood pressure is high, well now we need to do something slightly different to change it. We could put less stuff through it. So if your blood pressure is a little bit higher than you need it to be, then you could have a decreased heart rate. So your heart rate slows down a little bit. Let me move this over. And that helps. And then the other thing, of course, that could decrease blood pressure, is to add more space around it. And we would do that by increasing the size of the blood vessels, which is called vasodilation. All right, so how does this actually interact with real life? That's important. Let's talk about low blood pressure first. When is your blood pressure low? Well. If you're not doing a whole lot, 
you don't need as much blood pressure. You're not, for example, standing. So if you're laying down, your blood pressure might be a little bit lower. And then if you switch from a laying position to a standing position, now you need your blood to get somewhere further and your blood pressure might be just a little low from what it is. Now in a normal functioning human being, your heart rate would increase a little bit and your vessels might constrict a little bit, which would then go ahead, thump, and help increase the blood pressure. In some people, of course, this reaction takes a little while to happen. The medulla doesn't quite move as quickly, the heart rate doesn't quite increase as fast, which is why sometimes if you stand up very quickly, you can get lightheaded. The lightheadedness is not quite enough blood getting to where it's going because your blood pressure is just a little bit low. Other things can cause your blood pressure to change in this way that would cause vasoconstriction or increased heart rate. So now let's talk a little bit about that concept of increased heart rate and how this whole blood pressure thing relates to exercise. All right, if I'm exercising, so for example, if I'm gonna go out for a run, which I like to do, then I'm gonna need more energy. As we've mentioned, energy comes from oxygen and sugar, both of which will be in my bloodstream, which means I need to pump more blood to my body to increase the oxygen. Now that comes first. Getting oxygen and energy to the cells is definitely on the higher priority list than maintaining any kind of blood pressure. So therefore, my heart rate's gonna increase. If my heart rate increases, it's gonna cause my blood pressure to go up. And my body doesn't really love that. It knows it's necessary, but it doesn't love it. So it does wanna find ways to improve it. So if I'm gonna keep running and keep my heart rate a little bit higher, my body does want to decrease my blood pressure. Well, how can it do that? If my blood pressure is a little high, it can't decrease my heart rate, but it could dilate my blood vessels. And that's very often what happens. When you exercise for a period of time, your blood vessels will dilate. They'll increase a little bit. This causes a lot of things that people are fairly familiar with. Worst of all, it makes you feel a little bit warmer because there's more blood going to certain places. It can make you a little bit redder, especially in your face where it's visible. So I'm the kind of runner that if I go out for a run and then I have to come back to the office, uh, my face is red for like an hour and people are asking me what's wrong and I have to be like, no, I just went running. This is normal vasodilation. The other key effect of vasodilation, especially for runners, is that it does increase body temperature because there's now more blood getting to a lot of these extremity areas and so it's opening up. So that's why when you're going out running, they suggest that you essentially dress like it is 10 degrees warmer than it actually is because that's how you're going to feel as your blood vessels dilate and you continue to be active. Now it might seem like exercise is bad for you because you're increasing blood pressure, but acute or short-term effects are very different from chronic or long-term effects. And the acute effect of a slightly increased blood pressure that can be partially maintained using vasodilation is fine because the long-term thing is that it helps the heart. So it increases your overall heart fitness, it increases your heart's ability and efficiency to pump, and a little bit of increase in blood pressure will bring down blood pressure overall. That's also sometimes called hormetic stressors, meaning that you put your body under just a little bit of stress, which causes it to improve. You don't wanna put it under a lot of stress or it's gonna damage it but a little bit of stress will make it go, oh, I should get better at that. I will need that in the future. And we'll be talking more about that when we get to the muscular system, about how the muscles actually do adapt to that little bit of stress. Thanks.